Hello, quick notice, at the end of this video, we've got a video, I guess, of me, Ben and Ollie unboxing the 100,000 subscriber play button thing. So do stick around if you want to see that. Other than that, um, this week has been quite a windy one here in the UK. Uh, yesterday I saw a deer in a field. I saw a horse as well, but the horse is all... <laughs> Starting off the news this week is the Solar Orbiter, a European space agency probe made in conjunction and launched by NASA. As we mentioned last week, the Solar Orbiter launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida at 4.03 GMT on Monday. Its mission is to get closer to the sun than any man-made object before and use onboard scientific instruments to study the sun and help scientists understand more about why it is so dynamic as a celestial object. While this may on the surface seem like a pointless endeavour, it will actually help designers of equipment like satellites to better shield their designs from dangerous solar activity which can disrupt communication on Earth. The Solar Orbiter will arrive at its destination in about three and a half years, and it's hoped that the mission will last seven. In other news, a skeleton has been found in an underwater cave in the south of Mexico, dating back nearly 10,000 years ago. This is actually part of lots of particularly significant discoveries because it had been believed that humans crossed into North America from Asia about 12,000 years ago, but these new skeletons have shown that humans had settled down as far south as Mexico by 12,000 years ago, meaning that the crossing in America likely happened sooner than we thought. This particular skeleton has been analysed thoroughly, and despite degradation of the skeleton while it was underwater, some really cool things can be observed from it. For example, her teeth show that she had a high sugar diet until her death, which was when she was around 30. It's believed that she sustained three skull injuries, and while these didn't actually kill her, a bacterial infection could have. Starting off this week's paleontology news is the naming of a brand new genus and species of pterosaur from the famous Kemkem beds of Morocco. This animal, called Apoteramphus gyrostega, is based off the fossil of a partial rostrum which displays several distinctive features, allowing this taxon to be recognised as new to science. Apoteramphus has been classified as an asdarkoid pterosaur, not technically a true pterosaur, but just outside the family, and is estimated to have been a medium to large sized animal, with a wingspan anywhere from 3 and 7 metres. This new pterosaur is the third asdarkoid to have been named from the Kemkem beds, and the fifth pterosaur in total, indicating that this region has a high diversity of these animals. And now over to Ben, with some more news which will be included in this week's episode of 7 Days of Science, which is a YouTube news channel star- Thanks Doug. It's not just new pterosaurs we've got this week either, as there are two dinosaurs that have also recently been named. There seems to be quite a bit of excitement about Noosaurids lately, as the first of the new dinosaurs this week is indeed a new genus and species of Noosaurid, named Huincolsaurus montesi. Hailing from the lower Upper Cretaceous Huincol formation in Argentina, this taxon is based on some pretty fragmentary fossil remains of only five vertebrae. However, the researchers explain how these bones display unique bits of anatomy that distinguish Huincolsaurus from all other theropod dinosaurs. Interestingly, the phylogenetic analysis of this new reptile's evolutionary position has found that it's most closely related to the late Jurassic-aged African taxon Elaphrosaurus, suggesting that the Elaphrosaurine lineage survived into the Mesozoic later than we knew in South America. The second newly named dinosaur from this past week is a sauropod, which funnily enough is also based on only a series of vertebrae, as well as their associated chevrons. This dinosaur has been named Abderainerus Barsboldi, the species name honouring the legendary Mongolian paleontologist Dr. Rinchen Barsbold, and it was discovered in late Cretaceous-aged rocks in the northern Gobi Desert. These vertebrae also display a number of unique characteristics that make this animal stand out from its relatives, and the analysis performed by the researchers describing it suggests the dinosaur is a basal titanosaurian. However, the authors note that this placement could have been affected by our current and limited understanding of these sauropods. The paper also states how Abderainurus is likely an example of a new, very unique and specialised lineage of Asian macronarians, a large subgroup of sauropod dinosaurs, that was unknown to science before now. Very exciting stuff, it's good to know that there's always so much more to learn about these amazing prehistoric creatures. Back to Doug in the studio. Ben, did I leave my coat at yours last week? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. You sure? 
Yeah, right. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Anyway, so next up is the unboxing that I mentioned at the start, um, and I'm, I'm going to go look, look for my coat. Well, it's a few months late, but we've just received a mysterious package from YouTube. Oh, I wonder what it is. <laughs> we don't know. We've just decided to set up a bit of a set and lights and, and got us all together for a mysterious package that we don't know what it is. Let's dive Let's in. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, we broke it. Well, what can you do? Keep the box? Yeah, you can keep yeah, the box if you want. Oh, well, we can't now. We broke Ooh. it. It's coming out. Oh, it's 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 the slides. I wonder, we, got it. we can't do it this way. The cameras can't see it. Yeah. I wonder what this very naturally opening box contains. I'm going to stop. There's something on top of it. Three, Three two, two, one. Oh. Uh, <laughs> it's a letter. Okay. It's a letter it's from, from Susan. Susan. Oh, Susan. She's written directly to us. We, you've just done some. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's oh yeah. 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 Susan's signature. Wow. Anyone want Susan's signature so they can forge her bank sure. details? Okay, maybe don't say that. I don't think she actually signed it. Uh, of course she didn't sign it. It's not even addressed to us. Uh -huh. Oh, it's one of these things that you can't eat. Well, you could eat it, you just shouldn't. Uh, That's quite unnerving, isn't it? Just get some good shots of it. Yeah, it just has the camera reflected in it. That's true. Does anyone want to see what camera we have? Because <laughs> it's yeah. as... you, you reflected in it as well. <laughs> Well, thank you so much to everyone for subscribing to the channel and helping us to get here. Uh, we quite literally couldn't have done it without you. We've, had, we've said like thank you and how like amazing 100,000 people subscribed to the channel is loads of times before yeah. when it actually happened. And then again, when we did the <laughs> subscriber special like three months later, and now again, we got this. So this kind of feels like the end of what, six months of, yeah. we do mean it. Because it is, it is not 100,000 of us, it's people who have watched it, there are people who always appear in the comments, who always you know, give their support, even if you just view a video every now and again. It really does mean a lot, and thanks to everyone, like I say, who's left support in the comments, who's liked a video, who's given a video to their friends, perhaps not a physical copy, but you know, a more digital uh, YouTube copy. Run out of things to say. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for supporting us, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday. Oh yeah, Sunday of Science. <laughs> Should we do that again? <laughs> Thank you very much for watching this week's Seven Days of Science, and as, as always, always, we'll see, see you, on, you Sunday. on Sunday. You guys said it quicker than me. Yep. <laughs>